What's good, YouTube? Infamous Ghost Money here. And today we're going to be looking into a fraudster who was recently sentenced to 14 months in prison. And his preferred method of fraud involved using his nonprofit organizations as a vehicle that aided several of his buddies in claiming huge phony tax deductions that made him over $600,000 in the process. Today, we're going to be discussing Rabbi Isaro Goldstein. Before we get into it, remember to hit that like button and also subscribe to my channel to catch more of my content on financial fraud. We're on our way to 10,000 subscribers and I really appreciate everyone who's been finding value in the videos and supporting the channel. Thank you. All right, let's get right into it. Isaro Goldstein is the founding rabbi of the Poway Synagogue in Poway, California, who rose to fame as a local hero after being wounded in a 2019 anti-Semitic shooting that took place in the synagogue that unfortunately left one woman dead and two others injured. Goldstein is known for delivering an impromptu speech immediately after the shooting, speaking powerfully against hate. From this tragic event, Goldstein was thrown into the national highlights and even spoke about the events at the White House with former President Trump. But throughout all of this, the public was unaware at the time that Goldstein was being investigated by the FBI for fraud. We hold him partially responsible for my mother's murder and furthermore, um, the ways in which he exploited my mother's murder after the shooting, using her out to be a martyr and lying about what happened and trapezing around the entire country and the world, promoting peace and forgiveness and elevating his status as a hero, all while knowing that he was being under investigation by the FBI and that he would plead guilty to crimes, using my mother's murder and exploiting her death as a way to elevate his image. According to an article written by Christina Davis with the San Diego Tribune, Goldstein dates his criminal actions to around 2010, when many of the Chabad's Poway's major philanthropists had either moved away or died, and the full weight of the administration of the synagogue and its organizations fell on his shoulders. He says he was triggered by the memories of the financial struggles of his boyhood as the ninth of ten children in Brooklyn and of the lean early days planting the synagogue in North County. However, the investigation found that some of Goldstein's schemes had dated back as early as the 1980s. So clearly, our rabbi is not being honest with his story as to why he did what he did, and he was in it to help his friends and line his own pockets in the process. According to the indictment details, Goldstein was involved in several financial crimes, including money laundering and grant fraud but his most prominent scheme was an extremely complex and elaborate 90-10 fraud scheme, which involved having donors send large contributions to his synagogue or any of his nonprofit organizations. He would then provide them with phony documentation, indicating that the contribution is tax deductible and immediately return 90% of the funds right back to the donor while keeping 10% as his payment for running the scheme. These fraud donors would then turn around and report to the IRS these bogus contributions, of course, without including the fact that they got 90% of it back. Goldstein was extremely experienced in running this scheme and used a variety of means to get the money back to his donors. One co-conspirator pled guilty to working with Goldstein and his tax fraud scheme since the 80s. Now, Goldstein didn't simply pay this individual back in cash. Nah, that would be way too easy to track. He would pay back his contributions in the form of paying this individual's creditors, making large purchases on his behalf, giving money to his relatives, or even paying bills on behalf of his family. The indictment also included he did things such as pay his kids tuition, construction fees, and also purchase real estate. In another instance, Goldstein admitted that he attempted to disguise the source of more than $1 million in fraudulent donations by purchasing gold coins worth approximately $1 million that he delivered to the phony donor directly. Goldstein also had a secret lingo that he used to communicate with his co-conspirators over text and email. In a money laundering scheme that the rabbi ran, he would refer to large cash supplies as shala and the individuals that assisted him in laundering money as bakers. I got a call from the baker today. He's preparing for Friday. How many shala do you need? The baker came in earlier and has 22 shala ready to pick up. Just got a call that the baker is not baking shala this Friday and will be back next Friday and have the full order. A week later, Goldstein followed up. Cook just finished. Come pick up. In addition to his money laundering and tax schemes, Goldstein also pled guilty to government grant fraud, 
in a scheme where he and one of his co-conspirators, Alexander Avergoon, used shell companies such as Avergoon's phony construction company called Imagination Construction Company to create fabricated invoices billed to Goldstein to be eligible for emergency funds in which they were illegally able to obtain an amount of at least $875,000. And finally, the rabbi also admitted to defrauding three different Fortune 500 companies by tricking them into matching supposed charitable donations made by their employees. The rabbi fabricated fake receipts and then secretly returned their fake donations. This allowed the employees to claim tax deductions for completely fabricated donations and allowed Goldstein to collect the company's matching funds, including some that matched double their employees' donations. Rabbi Goldstein helped to orchestrate this scheme with at least six taxpaying individuals and two other associates who helped recruit new donors or conceal the true recipients of the funds. In total, the three Fortune 500 companies, Qualcomm, Johnson & Johnson, and Northrop and & Grumman were defrauded out of at least $134,000. Now, things were going well for Goldstein until his operation became infiltrated by an FBI undercover agent known in the case documents as Individual A. As the investigation continued, the FBI utilized an undercover FBI agent to meet with Rabbi Goldstein to further evidence of the fraud scheme. The undercover FBI agent met with Rabbi Goldstein on numerous occasions. During these meetings, Rabbi Goldstein offered to launder money for the undercover agent and did in fact exchange money for the undercover agent consistent with the 90-10 charitable donation scheme. Individual A was able to run several successful schemes with Goldstein, including the 90-10 tax fraud scheme from around May 2018 to August 2018. This gave the FBI the evidence they needed in October 2018 to raid the rabbi's home, synagogue, and other related businesses. Shortly after the raid, Goldstein would begin cooperating with the FBI in the form of working as an informant himself, which led to the arrest of many of his co-conspirators he worked with over the years. In the process of sentencing the rabbi on January 4th, 2022, according to Christina Davis's article in the San Diego Tribune, in a rare agreement under even rarer circumstances, both prosecutors and defense attorneys had recommended home confinement rather than time behind bars for Issa Rae Goldstein. They cited his leadership in the weeks following the 2019 attack on the Chabad of Poway and the immense physical and emotional trauma the former rabbi continues to battle and his cooperation in the FBI's fraud investigation. U.S. District Judge Cynthia Bashan rejected that punishment as not appropriate given the severity of the crimes. She is quoted as stating during the sentencing, you not only committed this offense yourself, but you took a lot of people with you. I think it's important to send a message to the community, and I think it's important to send a message to you, she added. When it was all said and done, Goldstein was sentenced to 14 months in prison, and he must also pay $2.8 million in restitution, an amount that he will share with several other defendants related in the case. Now, I found this case very interesting because I usually look into financial crimes that aren't as sophisticated as what the rabbi and his buddies was doing. I found it real interesting the way Goldstein took advantage of his position of leadership in the Poway community to pull the veil over so many's eyes while he pulled this scheme off for several decades. The part of the case that stood out the most to me was the way that he communicated over text with his co-conspirators, referring to money as Shala and his money launderers as bakers. I honestly found it hilarious because it reminded me of the way drug dealers communicate over burner phones. It also gave me the impression that this rabbi was very comfortable with the acts that he was committing. Also, considering the amount of fraud this man was doing, I found it very shocking he was only sentenced to 14 months and the FBI even suggested home confinement. I personally feel he should have been given much more time, but it further reinforces the stigma that people in power will always have an easier time compared to the marginalized individuals. I'm confident he'll probably be out before the 14 months is over and be living his life the same way he did prior to all of this happening. I also feel his time doing financial fraud isn't over. It's extremely hard for people to change their behavior, especially a behavior that they were doing for the past 30 years. I wouldn't be surprised if he continues to use his power and influence to pull off schemes, but of course, he'll be a lot smarter this time around. Either way, that's the video on Rabbi Isaro Goldstein and his tax fraud scheme. 
If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel to catch more of my content on financial fraud and also ways to defend against it. So with that being said, peace.